Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, he himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. 
When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Jude is the patron saint of desperate situations. And recently I've seen some interesting images of St. Jude. And his tonight is the vigil of the feast of St. Simon and Jude that we will celebrate tomorrow. But recently, as the Dodgers have been playing in the World Series, I've seen an interesting image where it has St. Jude, who has kind of a green sash that is going across his chest. He has a medallion uh, in the center of his chest, and he's holding a staff as usual. But if you look close at the image, the face and the body have a slightly different form. They look a lot like the great Dodgers pitcher Fernando Valenzuela, who helped the Dodgers win the World Series in the mid-80s. And so we're particularly uh, praying uh, to St. Jude uh, this evening. Also, as St. Jude is the patron saint of hopeless or desperate situations, I remember my first year as a priest, I attempted to preach on the first reading from today's Mass, from the St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, that refers to the relationship between husband and wives. And I remember that uh, that homily had one of the, you might say, strongest reactions from some of the faithful there at Mass. You might say it's quite, and maybe uh, politically incorrect, uh, one of the writings from St. Paul, and uh, there have been more than a few that have spoken of St. Paul in negative terms, especially on account of how uh, he writes about the relationship of husband and wife. However, it's important to remember, you know, in difficult texts of scriptures, in things where today uh, we would not hear the same type of language, to keep in mind the teaching of the church when we are reading scripture. And the first thing is that those that focus maybe too much on the human authorship, We know the church teaches us that God himself, the Holy Spirit, is the, what you might say, the primary author of the scriptures. In the catechism, speaking on this, it says, since therefore all that the inspired authors or sacred writers affirm or have written should be regarded as affirmed by the Holy Spirit, we must acknowledge that the books of Scripture firmly, faithfully, and without error teach that truth which God, for the sake of our salvation, wished to see confided to the sacred Scriptures. St. Augustine has a great principle when it comes to studying the sacred Scriptures, and he was a great student of the Scriptures. And in a letter that he wrote to St. Jerome, he said, if I find anything in the sacred scriptures, in the Bible, which seems to be contrary to the truth, I, he says that I presume, or he presumes, that he has not properly understood it. 
that he needs to go back and through prayer, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, seek that understanding. And the church always teaches that when it comes to the study of the sacred scriptures and that we always need to look at it in the context of the entire Bible, the entire sacred text. And then also we have the benefit of our Catholic tradition of the saints, of the magisterium of the church helping us to interpret and understand those sometimes difficult texts. We look in from the context of the entire scriptures, we can specifically look to the example of the Holy Family in the Gospels, where we see very clearly that it's the, the Holy Family, especially in the Gospel of Matthew, shows that, that the Holy Family into which Jesus was born was not headed by the immaculately conceived Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of Angels, nor by her divine Son, but by St. Joseph, the carpenter. Also, we see that throughout the tradition of the church that the popes have reiterated this teaching on the relationship of husband and wife. And maybe you might say earlier texts, earlier encyclicals of the Holy Fathers have maybe reiterated it maybe more bluntly in a similar, similarly as St. Paul had said it. And then as times have changed, the teaching hasn't changed, but sometimes the ways in which they've stated it have helped us, you might say, our, our society accept it by putting it into words that we might find easier to accept, like this from St. John Paul II in his encyclical. He said, in revealing and in reliving on earth the very fatherhood of God, a man is called upon to ensure the harmonious and united development of all the members of the family. He will perform this task by exercising generous responsibility for the life conceived under the heart of the mother. The church has also gone to great lengths to as well defend the role of the mother and to exalt her as the heart of the family, and that having a kind of place in the family as the queen, as enthroned. And especially when it comes to abuse of those roles or when a husband may take advantage of his position in the family. Quoting St. Ambrose, St. John Paul II also wrote, Authentic conjugal love presupposes and requires that a man have a profound respect for the equal dignity of his wife. He says, you are not her master, but her husband. She was not given you to be your slave, but your wife. Reciprocate her attentiveness to you and be grateful to her for her love. It's in these words from both the complete context of the sacred scriptures, from the teachings and the tradition of the magisterium of the church that we can come to a deeper knowledge and appreciation of the roles of husbands and wife in our society and even try to understand with and benefit from the letters of St. Paul that he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. May St. Jude and St. Paul and all the saints help us to understand the roles of men and women, husbands and wives, as taught by God in the sacred scriptures, so that our love, respect, and appreciation for one another might increase daily. Amen. Please stand.
As we gather together with confidence in the Father's love, we bring our needs to Him. For church leaders, may God grant ample wisdom, patience, and love for all who lead the people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For civil authorities, may God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. For our loved ones who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may Christ's healing hand rest upon them and bring them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the members of our community, may the love of Jesus flow through us to one another in small and large ways. Let us pray to the Lord. For the beloved, our beloved dead, especially for Victor Casados, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they soon be welcomed into the fullness of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, you gave us the example of true self-gift through the death of your Son. Hear the prayers we bring to you in his name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We will ring out our joy at your saving help and exult in the name of our God.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.